Welcome to A to Z Summary YouTube channel. Here is a detailed analysis and summary of the novel A Canticle for Leibovitz by Walter M. and Miller Jr. For regular updates I request you to subscribe our channel, also you can join our community by becoming a member of our channel, you get access to a whole range of exclusive perks that will take your experience to the next level, so, what are you waiting for, joining our channel membership is easy, just click the join button below to unlock all these amazing perks and support our channel directly. Your membership helps us create more content and improve our videos for everyone. The themes of the novel are The characters in the novel are A Canticle for Leibovitz by Walter M. E. Miller Jr. is a science fiction novel set in a future where civilization has collapsed due to nuclear war. The story follows a group of monks in a remote monastery who preserve the remnants of scientific knowledge. The novel is divided into three parts, each set in a different era of this post-apocalyptic future. It explores themes of faith, knowledge, and the cyclical nature of history, showing how humanity repeatedly struggles with the same issues despite advances in technology and learning. Through its portrayal of a recurring pattern of destruction and renewal, it raises questions about the relationship between science and religion, and the inevitability of human flaws. The first part, Fiat Homo, takes place in the 26th century, approximately six centuries after a nuclear war, known as the Simplification, which led to the collapse of civilization. The novel begins in the desert of what was once the southwestern United States. The central focus of the first part is a small monastery run by the Albertian Order of Leibovitz, a group dedicated to preserving knowledge from the pre-apocalyptic world. Brother Francis Gerard of Utah, a young monk, is the protagonist. He is a novice in this secluded monastery, which is nestled in the ruins of an ancient, devastated city. One day, while on a Lenten fast in the desert, Brother Francis discovers what seems to be the relic of a saintly figure and old fallout shelter. Inside, he finds a collection of pre-war documents and artifacts. Among them is a blueprint, believed to be associated with the legendary figure Isaac Edward Leibovitz, a Jewish engineer who had founded the order to preserve the remnants of human knowledge. The monastery's abbot, a skeptical man named Abbot Arcos, is initially doubtful about the significance of Brother Francis's discovery. However, the relics are examined and deemed authentic. The monks are pleased with the find, believing it to be a sign that their mission to preserve knowledge is being fulfilled. Brother Francis is sent to the local secular authorities, the barons, who are powerful figures in the post-apocalyptic world, to have the relics authenticated further. The secular authorities, including a learned scholar named Fon Tadeo, show great interest in the relics. Fon Tadeo is excited about the prospect of rediscovering lost knowledge. As Brother Francis and the monks work with Tadeo, tensions arise. The secular authorities view the monks' mission with a mixture of respect and condescension. They are eager to extract useful information from the relics while the monks remain dedicated to their religious and scholarly duties. The situation becomes even more complex as Thon Tadeo's research reveals that the pre-apocalyptic world had its own technologies and knowledge that were lost in the aftermath of the simplification. Meanwhile, political and military tensions increase as a new global conflict looms. The second part of the novel, Fiat Lux, takes place in the 32nd century, roughly 600 years after the events of the first part. The story unfolds in a different era where society is beginning to rebuild itself after the apocalypse. The Albertian order of Leibovitz has grown and evolved, with the monks now engaged in more sophisticated scholarly and scientific endeavors. The order's monastery is now a more prominent institution, with advanced technology and resources. The protagonist of this part is Brother Kornhauer, a monk who is an engineer and inventor. Kornhauer is working on developing new technologies based on the ancient blueprints and documents preserved by the Order. 
His work includes creating a new type of electrical generator, which could have significant implications for the world. The political landscape of the time is fraught with tension. The world is divided into various factions, with a powerful hegemonic state emerging as a dominant force. The Vatican, representing the Church's interests, is involved in complex negotiations and conflicts with these new political entities. The Order of Leibovitz is caught in the middle of these power struggles. A notable visitor arrives at the monastery, a diplomat from the hegemonic state named Hannigan. Hannigan is interested in the Order's research and technological advancements. He brings with him an air of both intrigue and menace. As Hannigan and Brother Kornhauer interact, it becomes clear that the political and technological advancements of the world are intertwined with the ancient knowledge preserved by the monks. The story takes a dramatic turn when Brother Kornhauer's inventions attract the attention of powerful figures who seek to control and exploit them for their own purposes. The ethical and moral dilemmas faced by the monks become more pronounced as they grapple with the implications of their work and the potential for misuse. The final part of the novel, Fiat Voluntas Tua, is set in the 38th century, approximately 600 years after the events of the second part. By now, the world is on the brink of another catastrophic event. The technological and scientific advancements achieved since the simplification have led to new tensions and conflicts. The Albertian Order of Leibovitz is now in a state of decline. The monastery is struggling to maintain its relevance and mission in a world that is once again on the brink of disaster. The protagonist of this part is Brother Zerchi, a monk who is deeply concerned about the state of the world and the order's role in it. As global tensions rise, a new and powerful threat emerges, the potential for a new global war. The technological advancements that were meant to rebuild society are now contributing to a new arms race. The story explores the consequences of humanity's failure to learn from past mistakes and the cyclical nature of human history. Brother Zerchi and the remaining members of the Order face a moral and existential crisis as they confront the possibility of another apocalypse. The monks grapple with questions of faith, duty, and the ultimate meaning of their mission. The final scenes of the novel are poignant and tragic, as the world seems poised to repeat the mistakes of the past.